Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, another one of my little painting demonstrations. Um, I've had a few people uh, say or message me and say that they found some of the demonstrations a little bit too hard and they were like uh, some simpler ones. Um, so what I've done is I've drawn out this little landscape painting as you can see of a guy walking up a hill past a little house. Uh, we've got some trees and a bit of sky and some bushes and stuff in the foreground and the track. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to paint this painting using the uh, three primary colours. A yellow, a blue and a red. Now let's have a look at my palette. Now my palette is here. <coughs> what colours I've decided to use is cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson and cobalt blue. Now this will uh, make the whole process of painting so much easier because you've limited your palette. You haven't got to make so many deci decisions. Uh, you know, I, what, what color, what color blue should I, you know, what colors should I use? Because most people's palettes has got have got far too many colors in, and sometimes it's really hard to make the decision. So uh, yeah, so you know, have a look in your palette, see what a uh, yellow, red, and blue you've got, and uh, practice mixing those colors up, and then. You can have a little go at this landscape. What we're going to do first is we're going to paint the sky, and I'm going to use just cobalt blue for the sky, and I'm going to paint it in just around the trees and right across. This is just a wash of cobalt blue over the trees because they're in the distance, so they'll be slightly more blue. Um, what you've got to remember is that um, colours in the distance appear cooler. So those trees being on top of the hill, the furthest, th furthest thing away in the painting will appear cooler. So they'll be bluer. The things in the foreground will actually appear warmer. Now we're going to be doing the track. And because we won't want to paint it just yellow, or we want to paint it just a, a red or blue, we need to think of a colour mix we can use. So we're going to use um, cadmium yellow with a touch of al alizarin crimson and a touch of cobalt blue will mix us up a nice brown for the pathway. So we don't have to... Uh, you, what you could do is you could actually practice mixing these colours before you actually put it down. But basically, um, cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson and a touch of cobalt blue Cobalt blue will give you nice mixes for your pathway. Mix the three colours and I've added uh, all three primaries together and now I've got a brown for the track. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little test of spot here and by mixing alizarin crimson, cobalt blue and cadmium yellow we've got our brown. So that's all we're going to use. And I'm just going to start at the top here, and I'm going to come down. In fact, I'm going to go over the figure. I'm not going to worry too much. This is going to be just this is just an exercise. I'm going to go down, all the way down to the bottom. I've got those nice broken brush strokes there, so I'm going to leave those. There we go. So you've had to, so you've learnt a bit about mixing there. You mix the three primaries together uh, by adding more yellow and red than blue. You end up with a little bit of a brown. Okay, very now warm. Now I'm going to mix a green, and it's going to be for this this hill over here. Now I'm imagining the sun's coming down through here. Um, yeah, it's coming down this way. The sun will be coming this direction. And so the sun's going to be hitting that hill, so I think a nice sort of green, lush green. So for that, obviously I've only got cadmium yellow and I've only got cobalt blue. I would probably use something like lemon yellow or Windsor, sorry, Windsor yellow if I had it, but I, but I haven't. Well, I have, but I'm not going to be using it today. So I'm going to use cadmium yellow and a little bit of cobalt blue. And I get a murky yellow, a sort of like an olivey green. I do, but that's going to have to do. It looks like a sort of like a summer, late summer green, when things have 
all dried off a little bit. So I'm just going to go around those trees today because we're keeping this a really simple exercise, just getting used to adding colours to the page. There we go. There's our little hill. We've got some bushes down here, we'll go around. There we go. No problem. So that was a mixture of cadmium yellow and cobalt blue. Now, while we wait for that to dry, we're going to work on this side of the painting. And for here, okay, we've, we've obviously stuck with our cadmium yellow. We've got our cobalt blue. So I've mixed a darker green, a darker version of that, adding more blue. And I've mixed a paler version of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce, so we've got a bit of variation. We don't want all that one colour. So we've got some variation. I'm going to start off by using the dark. Then I'm going to come down here and use the lighter, the lighter mixture as we come down to this uh, corner of the page down here. Okay, so let's get started. Right, so basically let's think trees now, shall we? Maybe have a little bit more blue in that because that's fine because we can use cobalt blue today. This is my tree. And we're keeping this very simple. This is how you can produce your first landscapes. Gives you plenty of thinking time. We'll put the trunks in in a minute. As we come down to the edges of the, bra of the, of the tree, we're going to just use the tip of the brush as we work our way down, just as, as it breaks up, as the tree would uh, normally. There you go. In a minute, we'll put our, tr our trunk in. And we can mix it. Right. So now I'm going to change that mixture. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow and alizarin and I'm going to just pop it in here so we've got a different colour, like a late summer green. You know, when things have gone dry and burnt out a little bit, it can be a very useful colour. So that's just cadmium yellow and alizarin. Now as I move down the page, I'm going to add even more cadmium yellow, so I've got a nice yellow look to this edge. I'm going to go all my way down to the bottom of the page. There we go. Now in a minute, when that's dried, we can put the trunk in, okay, and we can put some, uh, make a cooler wash and describe some foliage in this corner yeah so how simple is that right we've got these two little trees on top of the hill here now they're going to be um, I'm going to put more blue to the mixture so it's cadmium yellow and a lot of blue okay so it's two color mix so I'm going to have it quite blue because they're in the distance and I'm just going to use the press my brush down and go and just describe those trees very, very simply. Try and get a broken top to them a little bit just to give them a bit of texture. I'm just going to leave them like that. So we've got two trees on top of the hill and because they're further away they've got more blue. The further the colours are in the distance the bluer they'll appear and that helps give your painting perspective. The warmer the more you come to the foreground, the warmer your colours become. Uh, right, this little tree here behind the house, I'm going to have, I don't want it the same colour as that, so it will all mix into one. This is going to be like a nice coppery colour, like a nice browny, uh, reddish, reddish colour. And don't forget, you're artists, you can do what you like. If we want it, everything to look, you know, even if I'm painting a scene, if, if I want it to look identical, to the scene, I'll get a camera because it could do a lot better job than I can. I like we're artists, so we can we can take an impression of the scene. We can get the uh, the feel of the day without slogging ourselves to death. Right, 
Let's hope this colour is right. So this is going to go paint carefully around the chimney. Around the chimney. I'll put a little bit more blue with it, just to vary the colour a little bit. Just remember I said that. And as I, as I get to the top of the tree, I just release the pressure of the brush to get some texture. That's all you've got to do. Okay, so around the chimney, and I'm going to take it into this tree here. As I work my way around, I'll be going down this side, the left hand side, as I look at it, the left hand side of the uh, cottage. And as I work my way down under this side, I'm going to add, start adding more uh, yellow and blue to the mixture. So I green up a little bit. Because to me that looks like, and quite dark here, I want to make, I want something that draws your eye in. Something that draws your eye into the picture. And to me that takes my eye along that path and into the picture, the painting. Okay, now I'm going to go a little bit more yellow, too yellow. So you can get a lot of variation of colour just with the three primaries. Or sometimes when I go out sketching, just take well, you can just take the three primary colours with you. And with those you can achieve a lot. There we go. Right, now we'll describe this little uh, bunch of foliage down here. And for that we're just going to use um, cadmium yellow and some alizarin, alizarin crimson. Because we're only using three colours today. So we're very limited, but we can mix a lot with those. But this is going to be a nice browny colour. And I'm just going to paint them simply. So when you're out painting, if you decided to go outside, just simplify the colours. If you if you think you're going to struggle, simplify it, simplify it and make it easy. See now we've got that brown. What we can do to make that a bit interesting, we've only got three colours. So we could pick up one one of our pools of colours, say um, cabin yellow and cobalt blue and just to give that a bit of interest we could just drop some in just there maybe some would say that's spoiling it but I don't know it's experimental isn't it it's all about experimenting with watercolor it's all about just having a go and not being frightened to have a go if you're frightened if you're looking at the paper thing I'm frightened of ruining it then you'll never get any better because it's the experimenting that will actually make you improve what you do. OK, we'll just paint this little bit in here. and I'm going to let that run into this a little bit. I'm just going to touch the edge in some places. I don't want it to look like a jigsaw puzzle too much. So again, that's just a mixture of cadmium and alizarin. And I'm going to add a little bit more alizarin as I come down to this area, so just to change it a little bit. And I'm just going to leave it like that. So I've got a nice broken edge, uh, broken edge here for the next bit of foreground foliage, which is going to sit in there. OK, right now I'm going to paint this uh, form, foreground bush down here. I'm going to have that quite dark, but I'm gonna, as I'm painting it, I'm using our three primary colours, cobalt blue, alizarin, and cadmium yellow, but I'm going to uh, just use various mixes of those three colours within the uh, within the tree, hedge, bush, whatever you want to call it. So as I come to the top, I'm going to just that a little bit. Get 
get myself another little brush just uh, I get some nice broken top obviously I don't it looking like a uh, you want sort of leaves and branches coming out of it so I'm mixing now cobalt blue and alizarin so I've got like a purpley colour I'm dropping into it more blue now now I'll introduce more yellow again so what I'm doing is I'm basically changing the uh, complete, constantly changing the mix as I work around the uh, and that will add more variety and in turn it will add more interest and more blue more uh, uh, alizarin <laughs> I can never say that word properly alizarin um, cobalt blue so we get kind of a very grey green in places and we, you know this is just there we go and in that little and then just make sure you've got bits of grass sticking out Mm -hmm. and then while it's still really wet I'll mix up the darkest mix I can get with these three colours a bit more blue and I'm just going to drop that in right to the bottom here maybe a bit at the top just to add some interest and we'll leave it like that for a minute the uh, trunking of the tree um, again I want a various mix for that, I don't want all the same colour um, but I'm adding more uh, cobalt blue, more alizarin than yellow because if I, if I add too much yellow to that I'll end up getting green too greeny a colour so it's the balances with the blue really, the blue and the alizarin to get a nice colour, browny, purpley, deep colour for the trunk so I'm just literally suggesting the branches remembering that they're disappearing behind some of the, the foliage at times so you don't want to paint too many in there we go some very dark leaves around okay Now we're painting another wash over the first green we used just to get some interest into the tree because obviously it's not a tree isn't one flat green there will be various greens within that tree but because we're just using the three primary colours and the three same uh, red, yellow and blue it's just a, a, just a, a combination of what we used before. This is a. I always think it's if, when you're starting out. If you can keep your colours limited, take all the other colours away, and just have three primaries, you can't go far wrong. Remembering to have the the, the warmer primaries if you're painting a warmer scene, and the cooler ones if it's a cooler scene. But apart from that, you get a really nice feel to it. Right. So now we're going to paint in this hedge down, this piece down here. Again, it's just the same mix of cobalt blue, and. Uh, cadmium yellow with a touch of alizarin just to do a bit of change to it but you can actually sort of practice on a piece of paper before you get to this stage just mixing the see what how many different mixes you can or colors you can get out of those three colors and that's a really worthwhile exercise and into that we'll drop a little bit of the blue alizarin and the uh, similar to what we did over that side but not as dark Bit of shadow from the tree there. And what you'll also you'll end up is a painting that's very harmonious. It won't be uh, 
all over the place because uh, you've limited the palette you've limited your choice of colors and it's a cheaper one to paint but you don't have to buy so many colors but you can still say quite a lot with a limit people I think personally I think people have too many colors in their palette unless you're a really experienced artist keep them limited you know you don't need to have and so you know, when I do exercise like this I realize sometimes that I don't need all the colors that I've got on my palette I really don't you can achieve so much with just a limited amount of colors and it makes painting easier so it's a really good exercise to uh, to get involved in right so we're just going to do a little bit more detail to that bush there and again that was Eliz alizarin and cadmium yellow but more alizarin than that one i'm just gonna give it a little bit of shape by dropping a bit more color into it but i'm not going to be doing a lot to it there we go i'm going to go back to this copper what looks like a copper beech tree to me that's how I can only describe it add a little bit more blue a little bit of a alizarin make a nice slightly deeper colour no point in putting a lighter colour on there because you won't see it but a slightly deeper and I just want to do that for this side of the tree too much paint on the brush and I quite like that we'll just leave that quite simple so it's just a little bit of shadow on that side of the tree just to give it a bit of interest and the same with those tr little trees at the top we just want to give them a little bit of shadow at the bottom just to give them a bit more shape and form Right, now we, what we've got left to do, we've got the cottage, haven't we? Now we've already decided that the, uh, which way did I say the sun was coming? Mm -hmm. Okay, sun's coming in this way. So we will cobalt blue, a little bit of, there's, there is a lizarin, I couldn't say the word. A little bit of alizarin crimson, a little bit of cobalt blue makes a good shadow colour. If it's a little bit too bright just put a little bit of yellow in there and it'll grey it out slightly. So we want this side of the cottage to be in shadow. So we'll put the shadow down the cottage like so. Down here. And we'll have a shadow going across the road. Like so of the cottage. A little bit of shadow there. Put the windows in. Put the windows in there. There'd be a nice shadow down that side. Put the roof. The sides of the chimney. Under the eave. So I'm just simply doing it. There we go. Now while it's still wet, I get my rigger brush if I can find it there we go and I get some of the darkest mixture I can to put some of the lines in where the uh, guttering is going maybe it's just a door into the paint and that'll do for the cottage aren't doing anything more to it if I do anything more to it, I'll just be fiddling. And how long did that take? A couple of minutes. Right, so now we want some shadows. Actually, we'll pop the, we'll, what we're going to do is put our little figure in first and the little dog. So I'm just going to mix some alizarin and the yellow for his face because he's walking towards us, I think. Then I'm going to have some. Cobalt blue for his jacket. I 
where his hands just touch in the stick. We'll just put a little bit of, you know, a little bit of dot for his feet. Very simple impression of a figure. And we don't, he wants some hair, doesn't he? So a little bit of hair on his head. And then we'll just sketch the dog in. I'm just using my, what's it called? They call it a dagger brush. And it's a, got a very fine point on it, if you can see that. Um, but it's really useful for all these sorts of things. Maybe the lash of the dog, but hey, it's a sketch, we don't care. Right, we try and lift a bit of that paint out. There, and there. There we go. And now we'll put some shadows in where the hedges are casting a shadow over the path which would be here be a nice deep shadow there I might go a little bit onto that hedge down the hill there's some little track marks um, there'll be some shadows here and here warm those up a bit to reflect the brownness of the path There we go. Okay, right, so I think we're almost there really. So what we've got to bear in mind here, we've produced a nice summery looking painting and we've used three colours. We've used cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson and cobalt blue. And I think we've got varied greens within the painting. We've created a nice warm sunny feel to the, the, the work, the painting. And we've got depth, we've got cooler colours in the distance, warmer colours in the in the foreground overall i think it's uh it works quite well so all you have to do is get uh, yourself a couple of brushes that's the brushes i used today those three those four a rigger um and these three i could have done without that one it, those two would have been enough but i just picked that one up and used it um so three to four brushes um, the watercolour measures what, gosh, what's that, six, about eight by nine, eight by nine inches. Um, and you can produce a very simple watercolour with just three colours. Stick to three colours for the time being and uh, see how you get along. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and, uh, you know, give it a go yourself. Leave any questions, you, you know, you email me, uh, message me, whatever you want to do and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks ever so much for watching.